Welcome to the 42nd Way of the Cross. My name is Kathy Reed, and I'm a member of the Ecumenical Organizing Committee. As we gather on this Good Friday, we remember Jesus, who suffered and died on the cross because he challenged the injustices of the day. Through the destructive impact, impact of sin, injustice prevails in our lives, in our countries, and in our world. The Outdoor Way of the Cross began in 1989. It has Catholic roots and later became an ecumenical one. It began when people stepped out from the interiors of their individual churches, buildings, and came together on our downtown streets for public witness and commitment to our faith in Jesus and his relevant teaching to the issues of our time. The two-hour prayer walk held outdoors changed when COVID struck and kept us off the street. And we created a virtual event and that, that's, that'll be the same for this year. Our theme for this year is awakening to grace, embracing the world in its heart. Each station provides reflections related to our theme in our current concerns what Jesus says about it and what is being done to improve the situation. The theme encourages us to examine our attitudes, values and practices in terms of how Jesus instructs us to live. We are invited to participate with each other to take the hurts and brokenness and turn our world into one of compassion and justice. The scripture for this year is Matthew 25, 35 to 40. For when I was hungry, you gave me something to eat. When I was thirsty, you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you invited me in. I needed clothing and you clothed me. I was sick and you looked after me. I was in prison and you came to visit me. When did we see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger and invite you in or needing clothes and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison and go to visit you? The king will reply, I tell you the truth. Whenever you did it to one of the least of these, my brothers and sisters of mine, you did it for me. This year's stations will reflect on various aspects of the scripture passage. Today we experience the suffering and death of Jesus on Good Friday, yet we look forward to Easter Sunday, remembering a new life in Jesus' resurrection, where hope conquers despair, love overcomes hate, and life conquers death. Station one, I was hungry. We gather at Marion Center, a place of sanctuary where the hungry come to be fed. This morning, we reflect on the reality of hunger and as it affects various aspects of people's lives in our, in our midst and throughout the world. No one wants to be wor no one wants to worry about where their next meal is coming. Yet over 800 million people around the world, most of them in developing countries, suffer from chronic food deprivation on a daily basis. Simply, global hunger creates a cycle from where people cannot escape. It causes individuals to be less productive and more prone to disease, which in, which in turn makes them less able to improve their livelihoods or earn a better income. A vast majority of the world's most hungry people in, live in the 
live in developing countries. The situation is worse in Africa with almost 21% of its population facing hunger on a daily basis. The effects of world hunger as is diverse as they are devastating and in turn this negatively impacts the health, education, economic and social development of entire communities across the globe. Like all complex issues that impact us at a global level, the cause of world hunger are multifaceted. Persistent instabilities due to adverse climate events, conflict and economic slowdowns all contribute to fur food insecurity. But with the mass with the with the majority of hungry people living in developing countries, the main cause of hunger around the world is poverty. But with the planet producing enough food to feed everyone, why are so many people going hungry? In order to effectively fight chron chronic food deprivation, governments, non-governmental organizations, and global leaders across the all sectors need to work together to find new solution to world hunger. Food security means knowing from where mo meals are coming. Not just today, but moving forward into the future. It is true that the world hunger can seem like one of those insurmountable problems, too big for any of us to fix. But by changing, by changes in our own lives, at home, at work, in our communities, we too can contribute to finding world hunger solutions. Together, we can build the world where meals are shared. Everyone has a seat at the table, and there's always enough food to go around. A reading of the Holy Gospel according to St. John. The disciples said to Jesus, what must we do to perform the works of God? Jesus, Jesus answered them, this is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he has sent. So they said to him, what sign are you going to give us then, so that we may see it and believe you? What work are you performing? Our ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness, as it is written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said to them, Very truly, I tell you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, but it is my Father who gives you the tr true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. They said to him, Sir, give us the bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We pray for the poor, hungry, and neglected all over the world that their cries for daily bread may inspire works of compassion and mercy among those to whom much has been given. We pray to the Lord. We pray for the farmers with limited or marginal land throughout the world, for those who lack access to water and other resources. We pray to the Lord. We pray for the health of women, children, and families around the world, especially for an end to maternal and child mortality, that in building healthy families, all God's people may be empowered to strengthen their communities and repair the breaches which divide nations and peoples. We pray to the Lord. We pray for an end to waste and desecration of God's creation and for access to the fruits of creation to be shared equally among all people. We pray to the Lord. We pray for all nations and people who already enjoy the abundance of creation and the blessings of prosperity that their hearts may be lifted up to the needs of the poor and afflicted, and that partnerships between the rich and the poor of the world may flourish and grow. We pray to the Lord.
Welcome to the second station of the cross. For I was thirsty and you gave me to drink. I invite our elder to smudge and pray for all of us. And I invite also Eugene to drum for us. And I offer uh, tobacco for the prayer he's going to offer for all of us. Hey, hey. Mamma, <laughs>
for I was thirsty and you gave me to drink. We, we reflect on God's gift of water, a necessity for human life. In Christian social teaching, water is seen as a universal human right of all. Pope Francis, quoting St. Francis, speaks of water as our kin, as sister water. Everything is in relationship. In most of Canada, we enjoy an abundance of clean water. But in the last hundred years, lakes and rivers have been polluted through heavy oil, mineral extraction, deforestation, intensive agricultural and livestock operations. In cities, potable water can be used to water lawns and clean streets, while 28 First Nations communities are under long-term drinking water advisories. Women and men on inner city streets who are homeless struggle to find necessary drinking water. Large cities in the southern United States would like rivers from Canada to be redirected to satisfy the need for fresh water for their large populations. Climate change also affects the need for water as more and more parts of the world are becoming arid. Our call. We are called to respect water, which is a gift of God for all creation. We are called to ensure water access to all people in Canada and globally. We are called to respect water, using it sustainably, not in a way that spoils it. We are called to protect the ecological integrity of waterways across our land. We are called to be grateful to, to God for water through communal prayer and spirituality. A reading from the book of Genesis. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that the light was good. And God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was the morning, the first day. And God said, Let there be a dome in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. So God made the dome and separated the waters that were under the dome from the waters that were above the dome. And it was so. God called the dome sky. And there was evening. And there was morning. The second day. And God said, Let the waters under the sky be gathered together into one place. And let the dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth, and the waters that were gathered together he called seas, and God saw that it was good. Our prayer. Creator God, Heavenly Father, we ask that the wind of your Spirit would awaken us to the immense value of the gift of water and the importance of fair access to clean water to all people. We pray that we will treat water with great care by using it sustainably and in a manner that does not harm its integrity. May our deep reflection on your word and on your creation drench us with new appreciation for water and courage for its protection. Lord Jesus, as water poured out from your side on the cross on Good Friday, help us to see how we have violated water through 
pollution, and wasteful use. Help us to recognize in the thirst you suffered while you walked this earth. The thirst of the First Nations committees for clean drinking water. We pray that all may take initiative and responsibility for doing what belongs to us to make clean water accessible for all communities in Canada. We give thanks who work with communities in the global south to expand access to clean drinking water, including Crossroad, Cares, and Water for Life. We pray, Holy Spirit, that we would discover new wisdom and new technology that will help us to use less water and to create less pollution. We pray that initiatives to recover land and water from toxic waste may be developed and to recover plastic from the oceans. May this be a form of collective repentance for the sins against the environment of the last decades. Final prayer. Heavenly Father, as your wind guided the waters and parted them for dry land to appear in the beginning, may that same divine spirit guide your disciples to take their part in restoring creation's great gift of water. May we pour our lives out in grateful service as witness to your recreating love in our lives and for our world. Amen. Amen.
Session three. I was a stranger and you invited me in. In this simple phrase, Jesus offered both a problem and a solution. It is a powerful contemporary statement demonstrating that division, xenophobia, border walls, inadequate policies that we observe daily in our communities, our jobs, and even the news. The problem arises when we declare someone a stranger. Communities break down, families divide, individualism prevails, fear multiplies, and works take place. We need to ask ourselves what kind of host we want to become. With what voice do we want to speak? Whose needs do we want to address? What truth do we want to embody? Saint Romero said, a healthy pluralism is needed. We don't want to force everyone into the same mold. Unity means pluralism with everyone respecting how others think and among all of us creating a unity that is greater than just my way of thinking. I am from Colombia. I feel discriminated because of my skin color and my accent. We are all humans. I would like to be treated with respect, compassion, and humanity. Hi, my name is Pastor Lindsay Jorgensen Skakem, and I serve at Holy Spirit Lutheran Church here in Edmonton. I am a member of the queer community, and I consider myself queer and gender queer. I have at times felt as a stranger and outsider within the church as a member of this community people in the pews and from the pulpit sharing words that have come to damage both me and my family. Yet I know that's not the truth that God holds. In Psalm 139, God says that all of us are fearfully and wonderfully made, and that includes members of the LGBTQ2SIA plus community. And so I invite you to perhaps begin conversations in your places of faith, inviting members of the community to share what it's like uh, within our own world to be peoples of faith. We're happy that you are engaging with us and are welcoming us in this way this year. Blessings to you all. Hi, my name is Jeffrey Fedelak and I live in Larch, Edmonton, and I have a disability. Um, when people stare at me uh, I don't like it and but I know God loves me and God loves me just the way I am and I prefer when people talk to me, get to know me, uh, yeah, and that's the way I am. Well, back in the early days, um, with the people on this land, this nation, uh, now called Canada, um, the indigenous people were very welcome to the strangers who came here to this land. Um, when they got here, they could not survive in our climate. We welcomed them, we fed them, we clothed them, we taught them how to survive. Um, the problem with that is after we had taught them all those things that they had turned on us, so to speak. And um, I don't know if you want to say it like this, but they backstabbed us. And uh, once they got solidified it into what they wanted us for was our guidance. And 
and um, made their own settlements on our land. And it seems that they decided that um, they, they, they got a good foothold and then decided that um, they didn't need us anymore. And uh, as they built and, and flourished in this land, uh, the native people themselves became homeless, mm -hmm. as if we were strangers on our land, and that we weren't welcome here anymore. But still to this day, if you go to a native reserve, um, you are more than welcome in our house. We will feed you, um, we will clothe you. Um, it would be nice to see if they would start returning that favor and giving something back to us rather than take, take, take. Because the good Lord taught us, even before they brought their Bible, we were spiritual people. We have the Creator who um, taught us how to live with one another, um, how to get along with each other, no infighting, and it would be nice to see that uh, we are welcome here not for them to drive us away like we're the enemy. Um, when they came here, we didn't treat them like they were enemies. We welcomed them. So we need to learn how to live in peace and look after each other and uh, somehow try to bring an end to homelessness, um, hate, war, and just learn to live with one each other like uh, the Bible has taught us. And I don't know what else to say except that we need to learn to get along with each other and help each other out in these times of need. Creator of all that is, none of us are strangers to you. You made us each to be unique and special, and you love us no matter our race, gender, sexual preference, ability level, or status. You invited us into life and you remind us to always invite each other in, too. Help us to knock down the meaningless walls that divide us. Help us to remember that every human person is beloved by you. Help us to love each other. Amen.
Maleka Banu works in a Bangladesh garment factory that produces goods for global fashion brands, including some based in Canada. In a recently published report, she tells her story. You work and you work, six days a week, 12 to 15 hour shifts, thinking your luck will change. You'll make it in the end. But the end of my career is already here. 30 years and I still constantly worry about when I will get the next paycheck, whether I will have enough money this month to buy some beef or chicken for my children, whether I will have to end my son's education and put him to work, how I will pay for my mother if she needs to be taken to the hospital. Now with the coronavirus, I am in constant anxiety over losing my job. I have no savings. At my age, no one will hire me again. The report, from the United Steelworkers Humanity Fund records that Maleka earns the equivalent of 161 Canadian dollars a month, and that although the garment industry provides much needed employment, it is also a site of extreme exploitation. The report states, an abundant supply of so-called unskilled female labor from the countryside work under increasingly precarious conditions terrible occupational health and safety practice, physical and sexual violence, intimidation, and restriction on their rights to join trade unions, to meet the buyer-driven demands of a global industry characterized by seasonal and fashion-related fluctuations and ever-decreasing prices for the goods they produce. For decades, a network of local and global solidarity organizations has documented injustice in the global garment industry. They have revealed that cities as widely varied as Toronto, Hong Kong, and Manila have in common a garment industry where women and children provide cheap labor in sweatshops, factories, and homes. Solidarity campaigns and groups support workers, educate mo and mobilize consumers, and advocate with companies and governments. There have been some gains, often demonstrating the strength and resilience of workers who have struggled to claim their rights, to organize and to demand change. In recent years, after strong global pressure, some large brands have acknowledged that wages paid to workers should be enough to meet their basic needs. Yet few companies have lived up to these commitments. The Global Clean Clothes Campaign describes the link between low wages and corporate profits, stating, big fashion companies wield huge power. The dominant business model pits country against country and supplier against supplier in a global race to the bottom. In the face of the huge downward pressure on price and wage, almost all initiatives to tackle poverty wages have been unsuccessful. Workers, the majority of whom are women of color, remain mired in poverty. These reports also point out that while companies may pay the minimum wage wherever they are located, around the world there is a growing gap between the legal minimum wage and a living wage. By all reports, this exploitation of workers has intensified during the pandemic. 
brands and retailers responded to the pandemic crisis by refusing to pay bills and demanding lower prices from suppliers. As a result, garment workers faced loss of jobs and income, deepening poverty and hunger. As profits returned and even increased, workers continued to struggle from the, the effects of the crisis, many being owed wages from early in the pandemic. In March 2021, a coalition of over 200 organizations from 40 countries, including Canada, initiated the Pay Your Workers campaign. The campaign calls companies to live up to their responsibilities to their workers and implement worker protections and living wages for the future. The inequities in the fashion industry are well demonstrated by the example of t-shirt costs, where just 3%, that is 30 cents of a $10 t-shirt goes to the worker who makes it. And yet, as we acknowledge the struggle of garment workers for wages that will sustain their families and for humane working conditions, it is important to also acknowledge that for many people in Edmonton, that $10 t-shirt is in fact not cheap or affordable. The gap between a minimum wage and a living wage, the struggle to balance low incomes and rising prices for basic necessities, multiple systemic barriers to employment, all these factors link to those experiencing poverty in Canada with garment workers and others struggling to make a living around the world. Along with its toll on workers, this industry focus on massive production of cheap garments, encouraging consumers to be constantly buying fast fashion, also contributes to the destruction of creation. Fashion industry clothing and textile manufacturing processes contribute significantly to greenhouse gas emissions and industrial water pollution. And at the end of this process of manufacturing consumption is an oversupply of discarded clothing and textiles that piles up in garbage dumps or gets shipped overseas. There, it further disrupts local economies, which might otherwise be able to benefit from locally produced garments manufactured for local consumption. The question, when did we see you naked and give you clothing, suggests that as people of faith, we are called to respond to the assault on human dignity and on creation that results from a garment industry profiting from the exploitation of workers and the manipulation of consumers. The strands of this response are several. As consumers, we can pay attention to the sources of our clothing and try to learn about the conditions of its manufacture. Initiatives such as the Clean Clothes Campaign provide resources for education and action, inviting us to support workers organizing for fair wages and improved working conditions, and to demand of corporations the accountability and transparency needed to transform the industry. We can also make changes in our purchase and care of clothing to emphasize sustainable practices that disrupt the cycle of overconsumption and textile waste. There are a variety of organizations here in Edmonton that focus on making good quality clothing available to those with limited resources. There are also initiatives dedicated to creative repurposing of used and surplus clothing and textiles, diverting fabric from landfills and dumping overseas. In that process, they also create new sources of usefulness, comfort, and beauty. Let us be clothed with justice, weaving threads of compassion and respect, beauty and sustainability, care for human and planetary flourishing into all that we wear. With this vision in mind, let us hear the words of Isaiah. Is not this the fast that I choose to loose the bonds of injustice, to undo the thongs of the yoke, to let the oppressed go free and to break every yoke? Is it not to share your bread with the hungry and bring the homeless poor into your house? When you see the naked to cover them and not to hide yourself from your own kin, then your light shall break forth like the dawn and your healing shall spring up quickly. Your vindicator shall go before you. The glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Then you shall call and the Lord will answer. You shall cry for help and God will say, here I am. 
The Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your needs in parched places and make your bones strong. And you shall be like a watered garden, like a spring of water whose waters never fail. Hearing this call and promise, we join in prayer. God of love, we pray for workers everywhere seeking lives of dignity and hope. God of justice, we give thanks for all who struggle for a world where people's work is honored with fair wages and safe working conditions. God of grace, give us courage to learn to meet our needs for goods and services in ways that respect all people and care for creation. Amen. Dorothy Parker said, money can't buy health, but I'd settle for a diamond-studded wheelchair. In a world where wealth is often the key to a good life, her quip could be challenged. Because wherever you look, there is evidence money is directly linked to a long and healthy life. Each year, people gather in a small park near City Hall to honor the lives of people who have died because of homelessness. In recent years, that has been more than 100 people a year, with an average age under 50. Each of these people had decades of life stolen from them because of poverty. The past two years of the COVID pandemic have made us more aware of health inequities related to economic status. We have heard of difficulty accessing vaccines, not being able to properly isolate, or having to go to work in exposed jobs to pay the bills. But such unfairness was well established long before COVID. Without money, health support such as good housing, nutritious food, and dealing with the extremes of weather are big challenges. As we have seen in some dramatic cases from emergency wards in Canadian hospitals, even getting desperately needed medical care may not happen. We have deinstitutionalized services for mental health challenges but provided little in the way of community-based services to replace them. We demonize drug use instead of making it safer. So people denied good health services for pain and trauma resort to dirty street drugs and die of poisoning. Meanwhile, people with good incomes can live with their substance abuse and just carry on. We ignore complex health challenges from trauma experienced by refugees, survivors of domestic violence, and many Indigenous people. Public policy almost entirely ignores the evidence that attention to the social determinants of health, such as income and assets, education, racism, and access to medical care, nutritious food, and clean water would be a path to healthier lives. These things are not challenges for wealthy people. There are wonderful examples of people and organizations offering good services. The Boyle Macaulay Health Center, the Street Works Team, George Spady Center, nurses in emergency shelters, first responders. And we thank God for people and organizations dedicated to supporting good health for those with few financial resources. The Bible makes clear pain and suffering is not what a loving creator intended. The stories of Jesus are packed to the brim with healing of bodies, minds, and spirits. Where there was the brokenness of illness and injury, Jesus restored wholeness and celebrated as good life returned. 
God intends health for every person and for all of creation. There are many possibilities for us to find our roles as healers, confident this is what the great physician expects. The prophets, speaking in God's name, told those who were suffering that they would be restored to health, that wounds would be healed. But this will not happen unless God's people commit to demand good public policy so our common resources are used widely to ensure care for all, regardless of their means. Unless as individuals, we are there like the Good Samaritan, kneeling by the side of the road, offering first aid. Hosea quotes God saying, I led them with love. I bent down to feed them. I healed them. As God's health care providers, we are in good company. This station is also a reminder of the healthcare challenges faced by vulnerable people throughout the world. Like people living in poverty or unhoused in our communities, people in low income or developing countries encounter many health inequities. Their healthcare depends on the economic and political stability of their country. Many are affected by a lack of infrastructure to address their health care needs, as well as limited resources to fund health care systems. There are shortages of doctors, nurses, and other health care professionals, and often the health care workers who are available don't have adequate training. People may also live far away from a health facility and lack money for transportation or to pay for services. Environmental hazards such as unsafe drinking water, poor sanitation, indoor cooking smoke, urban air pollution, and lead exposure also pose major health risks. Although simple steps can be taken to prevent disease from these hazards, many governments have not made these measures part of their policies. As a result, millions of people, people suffer or die from illnesses that would be easily treated in developed countries, such as tuberculosis, pneumonia, measles, and diarrhea. For example, the World Health Organization estimates that unsafe water, poor sanitation, and poor hygiene kill 1.7 million people annually particularly due to diarrheal disease. The situation has been particularly dire during COVID-19. The pandemic has overwhelmed already stressed healthcare systems and taken resources away from other pressing health concerns. People in low income countries lack access to COVID-19 testing and vaccines and following safety measures such as physical distancing and hand washing can be difficult if not impossible, especially for those who live in overcrowded conditions such as refugee camps or who are internally displaced or on the move because of climate disasters, war or conflict. The Christian gospel calls us to follow Jesus and ensure care for our six brothers and sisters around the globe. As Matthew 9, 35 tells us, Jesus went throughout all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom and healing every disease and every affliction. Let us awaken to the experience of our brothers and sisters who face health inequities and work for change to address those inequities. And let our actions be guided by prayer. Creator God, we are grateful for healthcare workers who have struggled to bring medical aid and relieve suffering for vulnerable people around the world. We pray for all people who endure pain, illness, and death because of lack of healthcare infrastructure and resources economic and political instability, poverty and environmental hazards. We call on all people of faith and goodwill 
to give voice to the healthcare challenges threatening vulnerable people the world over and to insist on government policy changes that provide just and adequate care and prevent disease from environmental hazards. May we together build a world where, where healthcare is an essential human right and where all people can live healthy lives. Loving creator, you close the Bible with an image of a time when the leaves of a tree in your perfect city will be for the healing of all. Through history, in times of trouble, your messengers promise health and wellness would be restored, that there would be recovery from injury, no matter how bleak things seem. Your son Jesus was active day after day with the work of healing bodies, minds, relationships, and spirits, with no regard to the riches of those who were sick or maimed. Loving Creator, you understand that illness pushes us to feel helpless and alone, afraid and inadequate. Thank you for your spirit, who is our comforter, holding us in caring hands, reminding us that we are important to you and that no plague or injury can separate us from you. As we walk in the valley of COVID and war, and the miseries of poverty. We thank you for the image of the suffering wom woman who knew there was healing even in touching the shed of Jesus. And we ask for that same faith. We give thanks for the skills and dedication of all those who respond to your call and dedicated themselves to be healers. And we celebrate the Easter message that even the greatest assaults on wellness Death itself has been overcome. Amen. This station is at Lendrum Mennonite Church, where the good news of liberation is proclaimed and prisoners are welcomed. News broadcasts report on crimes committed and the results of the trials. People are sent to prison and removed from the public eye and memory. The pain people experience in the prison system is multifaceted. Listen to these stories. After my trial, I was sentenced to serve in a federal prison. I was taken from my family and circle of support to be processed and taken to what would be my place in the federal system. My sentence was for more than two years, so I had to leave my city, which had only a provincial jail, and go to the city with a federal institution. As I entered the prison and was led to my cell, I sat on my cot as I heard the key turn in the door. The pain of loneliness weighed on me in a way I had never experienced before. Psalm 88 verses 4 to 6. I am counted among those who go down to the pit. I am like those who have no help, like those forsaken among the dead, like the slain that lie in the grave like those whom you remember no more, for they are cut off from your hand. You have put me in the depths of the pit, in the regions of dark and deep. Today is library day. I remember my days of freedom and how I love to read. I can't go to the prison's library to choose books, but I can make requests and have the books delivered. 
have always been fascinated by the stars and the planets, the vast space which surrounds our Earth. Three weeks ago, I requested some books on space, and today they'll be delivered. As the guard drops off my book, I see that it's a history book about World War II. The pain of not being valued as a person with interests and dreams crushes me once more. Psalm 139, verses 1 to 4 and verse 13. O Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from far away. You search out my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, O Lord, you know it completely. For it was you who formed my inward parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. In prison, I had time to reflect on the road which had led me to this place. I recall the vivid memory of how my uncle began sexually abusing me when I was six years old. The shame I felt and the longing that I had to have someone to protect rather than abuse me was overwhelming. Searching for love and acceptance led me to a gang which promised what I longed for. Now I am here. The pain of not being loved had seared my soul and made me angry and bitter. Psalm 71, verses 4, 9, and 12 to 14. Rescue me, O my God, from the hand of the wicked, from the grasp of the unjust and cruel. Do not cast me off in the time of old age. Do not forsake me when my strength is spent. O God, do not be far from me. O my God, make haste to help me. Let my accusers be put to shame and consumed. Let those who seek to hurt me be covered with scorn and disgrace. But I will hope continually and will praise you yet more and more. Last week, my frustrations hit a new limit and I lashed out at another inmate who'd been taunting me. So here I am in solitary confinement, separated for 23 hours of the day from all contact with other human beings. For one hour a day, I'm allowed to stretch my legs in the yard, but only when there is no one else around. The pain of isolation is my mind asking the question whether the world would be better off without me. Psalm 57 verses 4, 6, 9, and 7. I lie down among lions that greedily devour human prey. Their teeth are spears and arrows, their tongues sharp swords. They set a net for my steps. My soul was bowed low. They dug a pit in my path, but they have fallen into it themselves. My heart is steadfast, O God. My heart is steadfast. I will sing and make melody. Today, I heard someone mention that they were going to the chapel. I did not have a religious background, so I asked what a chapel was. I was told that it was a place to connect with God. I asked to attend and was suddenly surrounded by a feeling I had never had before. There was a divine being who understood and cared about me. I recognized the pain I had felt for so long the desire to be connected with God. Psalm 145, verses 18 and 19. The Lord is near to all who call on him, to all who call on him in truth. He fulfills the desires of all who fear him. He also hears their cry and saves them. In Psalm 34, verse 18. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted and saves the crushed in spirit. Let's pray. God who walks with us, you've been our constant friend in dark and lonely places. No hole is deep enough, nor wall high enough 
to keep us from your love. We confess that in our fear and misunderstanding, we sometimes build walls for ourselves and others. We dig holes and traps. Forgive us, comforting God, and break down our work of division and separation. God who hears us, you also hear the cries of all who are in prison, those who love someone in prison, and those who work in prisons to bring humanity, well-being, and restoration. Listen to their songs and stories, and fill their hearts with your peace. God who sees all, give us a vision for a future without prisons. Show us a better way to make wrongs right, to preserve each other's dignity, to practice justice with love and mercy. For the sake of your son Jesus, who entered into the deepest, darkest prison, we ask you to help us set the captives free. Amen. We have reached the end of this year's Way of the Cross. We have reflected on the people in our neighborhoods, people in our world, people in our families, and learning of the pain and injustice and sadness in our communities. We are hopeful that together we can bring change, we can bring happiness, and we can bring justice. We remember that Jesus came to teach us how to care for each other and all creation with dignity and respect and fairness. We pray that we have the courage to see Jesus in every single person and act in ways that show God's love to them. We pray. Creator, awaken our hearts to the work of the Holy Spirit so we can be your love and your justice. Creator, you have called us to do good works in the world. Help us to remember that the abundance of creation is for all people, that no one should go hungry. We pray for families and individuals who are hungry for food in their bellies. We pray for people who are hungry to feel that they belong and they are welcomed. We pray, we pray for people who are hungry to be accepted for who they are. We look to Jesus who taught us that the second greatest commandment was to love one another. Let the Spirit move in our hearts to feed all types of hunger through acts of kindness and generosity. We pray. Creator, awaken our, our hearts to the work of the Holy Spirit so we can be your love and your justice. Creator, you have called us to do good works in the world. Help us to remember that the waters of the earth bring life to all of creation, so that all may grow and bloom. We pray for those who are thirsty for fresh water in their communities. Help us to promise to live more gently on our Mother Earth, for a better balance in nature and for protection of our water sources and wetlands. We pray that we can learn from the wisdom of indigenous people so that we can share and protect this land we call home. We look to our creator who trusted us to share all global resources. Let the spirit move in our hearts so that we can work together to build healthy ways to live in relationship to Mother Earth. We pray, Creator, awaken our hearts to the work of the Holy Spirit, so we can be your love and your justice. 
Creator, you have called us to do good works in the world. Help us to remember that each person is created in the image and likeness of the Creator. We pray for people who might feel lonely. We pray for families who might feel isolated, for children who might feel bullied, for new people to our community who feel mistrusted, for seniors who might feel forgotten, for individuals who might feel labeled, for students who might feel excluded. We look to Jesus because he was fully human and knows exactly how we feel. He trusted that God loved him and we trust that the creator loves each of us as a valuable part of the human family. Let the spirits move in our hearts so that we can all act so all people and can celebrate life to the fullest. We pray, Creator, awaken our hearts to the work of the Holy Spirit so we can be your love and your justice. Creator, you have called us to do good works in the world. Help us to remember that Jesus came to teach us how to care for each other and all creation with dignity, respect, and fairness. We pray for people in our community who cannot live happy, healthy lives. We see people who do not live or work in safe places. We look to the Spirit who graced us with the individual gifts and talents to be able to make great contributions to the community. Let the Spirit move in our hearts so that dignity is the root of our relationship with one another. And may we make wise consumer choices that support healthy life for all. We pray, Creator, awaken our hearts to the world of the Holy Spirit so that we can be your love and your justice. Creator, you have called us to do good works in the world. Help us to remember that Jesus taught us that we must serve one another by caring for each other. We pray for all who are sick and for those who care for them. We appreciate and pray for our healthcare providers and to an end to COVID-19. We pray that the most vulnerable, vulnerable all over the world receive the care they need to be the best versions of themselves. We look to Jesus for strength to face the hard moments in our lives with the hope and confidence Jesus had during his way of the cross. Let the Spirit move in our hearts to remind us to be grateful for, his, for this gift of life and to use our time and resources and talents for the good of our earth community. We pray, Creator, awake in our hearts to the work of the Holy Spirit so we can be your love and your justice. Creator, you have called us to do good works in the world. Help us to remember that we are a people of reconciliation and forgiveness. We pray for all who are in prison and for their families. We pray for workers in the justice system. May people in jail experience healing and restoration of relationship, and may our justice system work towards the dignity of everyone. Let the Spirit move in our hearts so we can work to make sure that voices are heard and that we have the courage to see Jesus in every single person and act in ways that show God's love to them. We pray, Creator, awaken our hearts to the work of the Holy Spirit so we can be your love and your justice. Creator, you have taught us that it is to all people, including children, to whom the fruits of your kingdom of heaven belong. Help us to remember that the youth and young are the future ambassadors of our global community. We pray that our children and the youth can journey on a path of living with grace, to bring dignity and respect to all of creation. You who have gifted us with children and young people in their boldness, energy, hope, and joy, Bless them with creativity, courage, and wisdom so we can work together to meet the challenges we all face. Let us follow their lead, appreciating beauty, learning goodness, seeking truth, and loving like you do. Let the Spirit move in our hearts to find the courage to listen to the voices of our children and our youth, embracing them as the stewards of our global community allowing their voices to resound in the care of all creation. Creator, awaken our hearts to the work of the Holy Spirit so that we can be your love and your justice. Creator, hear our prayers on this Good Friday. Give us compassion and courage to care for one another and your world. Heal and renew your community. Overcome all that divides us so that all peoples of creation can experience the fullness of life, dignity, and happiness. Continue to bless us until we meet again. 
Amen.